you toss that out there like that's uh not a great feat to have started off already as a, a working getting paid for a living oh. cartoonist i mean that's pretty huge right away so when i know you were a poli sci major you said uh, before we started recording for about two two months or something yeah yeah not not long i, I went to DePaul university and, and i thought um i'll be honest when i was in like fourth grade i announced to my family i want to be a cartoonist i want to do a comic strip and uh they say that I said I wanted to be Gary Trudeau, which I think is really weird if a fourth grader said that. But um, a very so sophisticated then, fourth grader. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think that story's gotten warped over the years. But um, I mean, I did come to love Doonesbury, but it just seems like fourth grade was early. But uh, so so that's what I really wanted to do. I, I was working towards that. I did strips, you know, in high school and uh, college, but my you know, my folks wanted me to have a, another plan. My dad's a lawyer. So uh, I went I went to law or you know, I went into poli sci thinking, well, if I'm going to be the next Gary Trudeau, I've got to know politics. And sure. I think my dad was thinking, well, this way, when he, everything crashes, he can go back. He can be a lawyer. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I, I took, you know, intro to poli sci. And about two months in, I think I realized, wow, this really isn't isn't me and uh and then thankfully i met a couple of older guys at, at you know, a couple of friends that were upperclassmen and they convinced me to switch over and be an art major um just because they'd seen my work and and they were like what are you doing why why, why are you doing this um so i switched over uh but yeah so you say that that was a big feat to be a, a cartoonist i mean getting syndicated it was like the dream my whole life and when it finally happened i mean how long did that take from we were in poli sci doodling to I, I've got to take these doodles and make it a big deal to now I'm syndicated? How long a, a, a time are we talking? Well, I got out of I got out of college. I got out of DePaul and uh, I designed T-shirts for a year with a friend and I. We, we had a business. Um, then I went a back. Business a, a profitable T-shirt business. It actually did pretty well. Uh, this is this you're a hustler, Rob Harrell. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we would we would design T-shirts for specific sporting events and i'm not a sports guy so it was weird that we were doing it in the first place but uh you know <laughs> we would design things for like the iowa michigan game and then we go up there and sell them in the parking lot and try not to get arrested for doing that and, and uh <laughs> and then we we also we said we put together a catalog and sent it out to um fraternities and sororities and then what ultimately happened is i got sick of drawing like bugs bunny doing keg stands and things like that for t-shirts um but we sold a lot of T-shirts. But, but anyway, um, then after what that, what kind of days are we talking back at a at a parking lot? You and your friend with a, a trunk full of T-shirts. How much money are you pulling off on a day like that? Boy, it's been a while, so I can't I can't really remember. But I do remember one time we 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 had a trunk full of T-shirts that were specifically about Michigan beating. I can't remember who, um, and. Uh, and we got up there and it was freezing cold. So nobody was wanting to buy the t-shirts on the way in. And then we went to a bar to watch, watch the game play out and, uh, and watched Michigan get pounded. And, uh, <laughs> Dewey had this, this, you know, huge investment of t-shirts in the trunk of the car that were not going to pay out. And, uh, so afterwards we were out there trying to sell them for like three bucks a t-shirt. We we're like, tell people you bought the shirt before the game, you know, you know um, so it's a pretty good sales pitch yeah, yeah. so we, we did that for for a while and then i went to ringling school of art design down in sarasota and studied illustration got and into at this painting. point dad has said okay i i accept that uh, my son is off to run or yes yes <laughs> he, he's, he's, he's and he, very very supportive i think they were just always concerned that i have a, a, a plan b um Oh, yeah. So I went down and I studied. And then uh, when I got out, I started as an illustrator. And it was 2002 is when I finally submitted a comic strip idea that the syndicate liked. And it was Universal Press Syndicate, who I'd always wanted to be with. They were, you know, they they handled Garfield and Doonesbury and, and um, you know, a lot of the big ones. Um, so I was surprised when you said Gary Trudeau, a, a fellow Hoosier. We we get Jim Davis preached at us on a, on a pretty regular basis. Yeah, and Jim yeah. Davis well, and, and I, David Letterman, those are our favorite sons, right? Yeah, <laughs> John Mellencamp, yeah. we can't and forget I, him. 
And I've gotten to know Jim a little bit over the years. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, he, he helped get me into the National Cartoonist Society, uh, which is really nice. I mean, he's a great guy. Um, yeah, but, but so finally, I, you know, Bloom County was probably, if you read Bloom County, that was probably my biggest inspiration as far as a comic strip. Um, so then I finally landed this big top. And uh, so I did that from 2002 to 2007. Um, and, but, you know, the day I found out, I went nuts. Um, it was really exciting. Uh, so it, the way the day I found out I was getting to do it, not the day it ended. Um, but, they, uh, but then the they... they found, ah, how'd you celebrate? Well, what was that moment like? Uh, I jumped around. I had a studio in the Stutz building, if you know it, downtown Indy, uh, mm-hmm. where there's a bunch of artist studios. And uh, I just remember I got a call from this guy who I'd known his name, Lee Salem. He's the head of the uh, syndicate. And I, I'd known his name since I was in seventh grade. And, and uh, you know, he was this untouchable, like, oh, my God, whenever I ever got to talk to him. And he called me on the phone to ask me to do the strip. And I, I think I jumped around for about 10 minutes, um, wore myself out. And then my wife and I went out to dinner to this restaurant that we loved. And they served us. The worst meal, one of the worst meals I've ever had. I don't know what happened. It was just like they were having an off night, and uh, I should have taken that as a an omen or something. But um, thankfully, I didn't. So I loved doing Big Top. It was a lot of fun. We put out a couple of Big Top books, and and uh, it was fun. So anyway, then I I pretty soon thereafter they asked me to take over the strip Adam at home. Uh, so I started doing that, and around that time is when I started on the graphic novel. Then came the Zarf books, and now we're here. Well, at the height of it all, the Middle Grade Ninja podcast, I, I got. <laughs> I know, I know, I've arrived. I'll be built into this. It's <laughs> well, yeah, uh, There's so many questions to unpack on as to how you, you got there, and I, I suspect some of the answer is a bit of luck, a whole lot of hard work, and uh, <laughs> some variation thereof. Yeah, yeah, yeah all yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, uh, a lot of hard work, you know. Uh, I I think I never had any idea of how hard a graphic novel was to do, um, and then I set out to do sort of a long one with lots and lots and lots of detail, and uh, you know, thought I'd crank that out in about six months, and it was it was more like a two and a half year process. Um, and uh, I want to do another graphic novel, but I don't want to do another graphic novel, so I haven't figured that out yet. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's been a lot of work, but it's, you know, um, I had friends, most of my friends from college, you know, went out and got what I would call normal jobs. And, uh, you know, they started climbing the ranks and buying houses and um, having 401ks and things like that. And uh, meanwhile, I was still, you know, struggling, waiting tables. And, and uh, it's a different path. And as, when I talk to kids who want to be a cartoonist or be an artist. Um, That's one of the things I always say. I'm like, well, just be prepared that, um, you know, while other people may jump on the highway, you're going to be like hacking a trail through the woods. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of work, but you also might find some amazing things in those woods, you know, like you have some moments, um, like right now, this is a moment that I've been waiting for for years to get this book uh, into people's hands, and and it's just, I, I I wouldn't give it up. I wouldn't give it up for uh, for the uh, maybe easier or straighter path. Uh, well, if you want an ordinary life, you'd have done ordinary things, right? Right. I guess so. I guess so. And I don't. I'm not. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back by saying that. I'm just saying, um, yeah, it is. It is a weird, weird um, way to make a living, and sometimes. Um, you know, I, I didn't see myself ending up exactly where I am now. You just kind of end up following uh, hunches almost. And uh, like, wait, I think I could do that. And I think I could do that pretty well. And and, uh, and then I started writing and I realized how much I love the writing part. So I don't think I'm going anywhere um, uh, soon. I think I'll keep writing. <laughs> 